Free speech isn't free speech. You know, people think of free speech as kind of like a decoration, something like that in your life. It's not that at all. It's not the ability to speak truth to power, although it is also that. It's not that. It's way more than that. Free speech is how you think. It's not thinking. You know, the, the word that, that, that Genesis relies on to create the cosmos, let's say, in the story. By the way, that's the image of God in which you're made, male and female, that gives you that fundamental value that's at the core of our idea of natural right. It's not thinking, it's speaking. And the reason for that is, look, first of all, you can hardly think. It's really hard to think. You have to be trained like mad to think. You have to be able to divide yourself internally into a couple of different people. And then you have to let those people have a war in your head. And that means you have to develop characters who have opinions in great detail, opinions that might be contrary to your own, and then you have to withstand the tension of letting them have it out. And you only see that thinking in great literature, like you see that in Dostoevsky, he's an absolute master of that. And you know, you can think a little bit, but mostly you're biased and you have confirmation bias and you see things the way you see them and you have massive blind spots and you're ignorant as hell, you just, you just, you just can't think, but you can talk. And the thing is, if you talk, other people will correct you that's the thing, and that's thinking. So if you get up and you have some th something to say, and you say it stupidly, because of course you will, because what do you know, then other people will tell you where you're wrong, and then you can learn, right? And then everybody can think. And so what that also means is that to be free to speak, even to tell the truth, means you have to be free to be stupid and ignorant and malevolent and bitter, because that is who you are. That is what you are, because you're flawed. So the idea that, you know, you, you can't use your free speech if it's offensive is just, it's an idea that is so, ab you don't know if it's naivety outdoes its malevolence. It's a real battle. Which of, the, which of those two things are worse? I would go with malevolence because it detracts, it attacks something that's so absolutely fundamental. It's like, well, of course people who are speaking freely are going to be offensive. I mean, have you ever had a serious discussion with anyone in your life? And I mean a serious discussion. I mean the sort of discussion you have when you're with your wife, when you're wondering whether your marriage is going to survive, or, you, or with your kids when they've done something that is really not in their best long-term interest. I mean a serious discussion. You can't even get off the ground without being offensive. You can't get off the ground without offending yourself in a conversation like that. You don't even want to admit how you feel or how you think to yourself. If you think you can have a difficult conversation without offending people, all that means is you're not having a difficult conversation. Because, well, an easy conversation, by definition, no one gets upset about that. There's no real problem. There's no real disagreement. There's, and there's no real, real world problem to be solved. It's just trivial. It's like discussing, you know, last night's sports event. There's nothing to it. If you're going to have a conversation about something that matters, you know, and the world is made out of what matters, that's a good thing to remember. If you're going to have a discussion about what matters, if you're really going to talk about it, everyone is going to be offended by that, especially if there's something rotten in the state of Denmark and you happen to be the one that, are po that, it, that is pointing it out. So then you think, well, your freedom of speech, that's not about you being able to speak truth to power. That's about you being able to chart your destiny in the world. And more than that, it's, it's even more, and that's important enough because, you know, life is hard. And if you don't get to think when you, when you walk through your life, you will fall into a pit. There's no doubt about that because that's what thinking is for. It's to stop you from having any more catastrophes than are absolutely necessary. And it's a terribly difficult process. And so if, if that's interfered with, it isn't that you don't get to speak truth to power. It's that you do not get to act in the world in a manner that allows you to, to eliminate endless, unnecessary, hellish suffering, and not just for you, but for you and your family and your community. And so the